you know, call me supersonic, give me gin and tonic should be on my favorite lyrics of all time too, right? <laughs> Hi, I'm Simon Ford, the co-founder of Ford's Gin, and I'm here to talk through my 26 questions. My favorite job or project? It's, that's a good question. I think my favorite job or project is anytime I bring people together so that would be some of the events that i've thrown throughout the years of various cocktail festivals we did one just last week in new york city uh, where we brought 250 of our closest friends to a rooftop and we just watched people dance and mingle and share business cards and so i think it's an ongoing project of mine to just actually constantly be uh, throwing events that's why i'm going to aspen next week actually Aspen is going to be another little gathering of martinis under the mountains. So I think the most important project to me is when I get to bring people together. My favorite food is organic dark chocolate. Uh, the more chocolatey, the better. And, and it might be one of those expensive habits. And if I had to pick a cuisine, it would be Japanese or French. But if I had to pick one food, organic dark chocolate. When it comes to sports, I'm not particularly good at any, uh, and I wish I'd started earlier in life at the sport that I do love, and that would be tennis. I love to watch the game. It's a sort of psychological battle between two people, and uh, I think it's the that every single hit, every single that you is a new challenge, and every single hit is a, a, a new thing that you have to do. And I feel like that's a little bit like being a bartender, every new customer. So that, I think there's something about playing tennis that I love. That would be my favorite sport. My most treasured possession is a trunk of memories that I've kept all my life. Uh, I've kept it since school. It's got old concert ticket stubs. It's got photographs, postcards. I, I'm kind of old fashioned. The digital world has not quite uh, embraced me having these digital uh, tickets on phones. I, I just want something to put into that trunk. And I think that if there was, the house was on fire, the one thing I would grab would be those memories. I was immortal. I think I've learned to sword fight, uh, just in case it's a, a Highlander kind of uh, thing. <laughs> and then, and then perhaps what I would do is break as many Guinness Book of World Records as I could. You know, like fall from the highest height, swim the Atlantic Ocean, uh, climb Mount Everest naked <laughs> twice. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I was just thinking of how would you occupy yourself throughout the rest of time? You know, you'd sort of set yourselves all of these silly goals that only you could do because you were immortal. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it's an, an ego thing. I think it would be just to sort of create these fun adventures for, my, for myself. That I'm a strong person or that I'm an ambitious person. I actually don't think that I am. I just think I just follow a path that's out there and kind of go with the flow. And it led me into this hospitality industry and led me where I was. My guilty pleasure will definitely fall under the sum of the music that I listen to. <laughs> I, I can definitely be seen um, chanting some Bon Jovi from time to time, living on a prayer, you know, <laughs> dancing around the, the living room. I think that, that that would be my guilty pleasure. It's probably the bad music that I listen to, though. <laughs> How do I want to be remembered? It's, how would I want to be remembered? I would like to be remembered as someone that bought kindness, happiness and love to the world. There's some hippy dippy stuff for you there, Tiff. <laughs> or oh, celebrity crush. Shakira is my celebrity crush. Yeah. Another guilty pleasure. <laughs> Her music. <laughs> 
my bucket list this year is is a tough one right i think everyone's having a tough bucket list moment but i think if i had to pick one thing i would just love to do it would be to land at somewhere like Osteria Francescana, uh, Francescana in, in, in Italy and just have the most incredible dining experience to, to wrap up the, the year and maybe do that on something like my birthday. A stirred gin martini, please. <laughs> stirred. Definitely a, a, a nice, stirred, strong drink just to start my evening. If I wasn't in hospitality, I think I would try and do something adventurous, like learn to scuba dive and then become something like a scuba dive instructor or, or try and organize things like cycle tours around the world, you know, like a cycle across Bolivia or something and hopefully try and turn that into some kind of small business where people have fun adventures and uh, I would be the sort of tour guide, as it were. Something like that. Adventurous. Something adventurous. Something that's always in my carry is my passport because I like to be spontaneous. If someone were to say, hey, Simon, let's go to Italy. Uh, and I was in New York, I'd be like, okay. And I'd get permission first, of course, and then uh, hopefully be able to, a able to go. I, I think a sad answer to this is my phone. But you can do everything on that. You can book your Uber, your flight and not your hotel and all those different things and call people up. So I think just going around the world with a phone and a passport. My most treasured industry memory goes back to one of the very first trips I ever organized for bartenders. It was a trip I organized for US bartenders and I brought them back to England. And I remember all of the bartenders in England really coming out and being really interested to meet these bartenders from the US. Now, I'm going to show my age, but this is before Facebook. And what I saw happen in that moment is the sharing of ideas, the beginning of friendships, and most of those friendships are strong friendships to this day. And, and it was almost like pen pals are created within the cocktail community. And I think that that is my most treasured sort of industry moment because it kind of set me on the journey of what I felt my purpose in this industry might be. And that's what I think I still try to do is bring people together, hopefully to share great ideas and start friendships. Yes, <clears throat> my mentors. So throughout my sort of career, I guess, people have taken me under their wings and, and sort of cared for me in a sort of, you know, nurtured me in a sort of professional manner. And, 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 I, and those are the people that I sort of look up to as my sort of, I guess, peers and, 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 and greatest mentors. And that would be Nick Blacknell, who is sort of just a great marketing genius, all around great marketing genius. Charles Rolls, who founded Fever Tree. I used to work for him uh, for, for many years. And so he's a, obviously a great businessman. And then on the bartender side, you know, I, I sort of joined that bartender movement at the very end uh, of the 90s in England. And so it sort of it was people like Dick Bradsaw, who I went on this sort of trip with, and Douglas Ankara from the Lab Bar, who, we, who recently passed. But these bartenders really sort of took me under their wings and taught me cocktail and what cocktail culture was all about. And there was one particular bartender called Wayne Collins that actually really got me into cocktails. And then I would say probably the biggest influence on me is being a bartender called Sasha Petrosky, who opened Milk and Honey. He's the one that said, Simon, you should make a gin uh, and you should put your name on it and you should make it a cocktail gin. And he's like, you know, that's what your calling is and it's what you've done all your, all your life. Uh, people know you for gin and you should do that. So I, I, as you can probably tell, the, the, the mentors are, are so important to me in, in my life. I got several that I haven't even mentioned, but th that's a snapshot of some of the people that really inspired me to be where I am today. There were people on the Titanic that said no to dessert. <laughs> now, I would say that a philosophy that I live by would definitely be just be kind to others. There's a thing that goes around the internet and Instagram that says, you know, there are people fighting battles that you don't know about. Be kind. But I truly believe that that is the thing that we need to be, compassionate and kind to everyone around us. 
with my time off, I really like to spend time with my family. I, I call it downtime. I, we like to go for hikes, make home cooked dinners. You know, when you've been on the road a lot, that is so, so meaningful. And just sit in the back garden and sip wine and hope that the weather's good. In five years from now, I have a dream, and that dream is to be building a distillery for Ford's Gin. You know, we created Ford's Gin. It's still a very small batch gin. We make it with this 10th generation, 11th generation master distiller, Charles Maxwell. And I would like to sort of propose to Charles that he help build uh, a Ford's Gin distillery with me. And then hopefully my retirement could be running a little distillery. But I think that in the meantime, the idea uh, is to really grow uh, Ford's Gin and hopefully make it a household name so that I can justify asking for a distillery. Ford's Gin is made in London right now. Uh, so I think the distillery should be in the, the UK. It's a London dry gin. So if possible to create the distillery within London as well, I think that that's the, the sort of true home of Ford's Gin. Am I a cat person or am I a dog person? It is quite easy, actually. Uh, I'm a cat person. I've had several cats over the years. I, I can even tell you the names of all my, all my cats. Uh, Iggy, uh, named after Iggy Pop. I had Elwood after Elwood Blues from the Blues Brothers. Dillinger, uh, named after the, the reggae star Dillinger, who, you know, a knife, a fork, a bottle, and a cork. That's the way you spell New York. I had a cat once called Havoc Hardwick. And that must have been when I was playing Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> so all, all, a lot, lot of, lot of um, cats named after some of my sort of idols throughout the years. But that doesn't mean I don't love dogs. We did have a family dog, which, we, which I love very much. So uh, just cats, cats first, because they're more independent. <laughs> dogs are loving, but, they're, but you know. They're, 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 they're less independent, you know, and I, I don't like the idea of ha thinking about putting a dog into a kennel every time I go on a trip. So I just, just stuck the cats throughout my, my life. <laughs> Something I dream of doing. I do have a sort of this list of things that I'd love to do before I die. I think that the one that's at the top of that list right now is to be able to climb Machu Picchu in Peru, uh, see the Inca Trail, deeply into uh, history uh, and spirituality of, of cultures around the world. And I think that that's going to be a very moving experience. So I think that I dream of climbing Machu Picchu one day. My favorite book I've probably ever read is called News of a Kidnapping, Gabriel Garcia Marquez, the Colombian writer. And he took accounts from the very famous, um, the, there was a very famous moment in the cartel history of Colombia where lots of high profile kidnappings took place by Pablo Escobar and the Medellin cartel. And he interviewed them and put together an account that's so sort of poetic, but it really shows the atrocities, it doesn't glamorize it in any way that that period of history was for Colombia, but he does it in such a way that I almost lost my breath worrying about the, the kidnapped uh, and, and they were eventually released and it's just an incredible account of that. So I think that that's probably a book that just deeply touched me because of how well written it was. The show's Love the Peaky Blinders. <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a good show uh, that's on TV at the moment. I could go on about favorite shows and stuff. <laughs> I could also go on about favorite lyrics forever. Yeah. My favorite lyrics. That, 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 this, this is the hardest question of 26 questions for me because there are so many, like it's, it's poetry, you know, and I, I think I wrote down a few in, in preparation. One was, dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to get through this thing called life, you know, when the doves cry, uh, Prince. Bob Marley is a trunk of treasure when it comes to like quotes, you know, I mean, get up, stand up, stand up for your right. 
And I guess Call Me Supersonic, Give Me Gin and Tonic should be on my favorite uh, quotes, uh, lyrics of all time too, right? <laughs> Just given what I do. <laughs> I, I honestly, I I could go on on this one. Now I was like, all you need is love. Just so many little lines and things that came through in songs. I I, I almost think twenty six favorite lyrics could 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 be a show for me. <laughs> what truly makes me happy is music, friends, red wine, chocolate. I'm simple. <laughs> the advice that i would give to my 20 year old self would be start a savings account <laughs> it's as simple as that start a savings account <laughs> i think my favorite place is in front of a sunset it's just a feeling, it's a moment, it's not a particular place as it were, you know? It's just something majestic about nature and being able to enjoy it. And that is one of those moments where it all comes together and sort of shows shows its true colours, really. You see all those colour changes and you just feel the atmosphere, you know? And so a, a great sunset and to be in front of it is my favourite place. Another favourite place of mine is on a bar stool at a bar, <laughs> being served a great cocktail and perhaps some nice bar food. If I could only drink one cocktail for the rest of my life, it would be a Ford's gin and tonic. It's a refreshing drink. It's sessionable. It suits and serves most purposes. It's delicious. Forced to taste great in a gin and tonic. Uh, why wouldn't I drink it with my favorite gin? <laughs> Thank you for letting me play. This is fun. And now I'm going to have to go and find some chocolate, friends, wine, and then put some good music on. <laughs> it's so nice catching up. Thank you.